Thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great honor for me to speak to you today as the Danish ambassador to the United Kingdom and as a representative of the incoming EU presidency. It is valuable for me to engage with a sector so pertinent to our economic prosperity. Today, I would like to tell you a little bit about our experience with regulation of the financial service sector in Denmark. Afterwards, I will focus on Denmark's upcoming presidency of the European Union. And finally, I will talk a little bit about the continued strong presence of Danish financial services here in the UK. Enabling economic growth should be the main priority across Europe today. It is certainly in Denmark. It is a further Danish priority that this growth should be green. Growth requires investments, and green growth requires investments in green technology. Financial institutions facilitate the investments we need to create growth, and as such, provide the frame for the activities of our wider economy. It is therefore essential that we re reinvigorate the financial service industry. This is about building public trust and confidence. It is about constructing a stable system which can provide the foundation for future economic growth. And these aspirations boil down to getting it right on regulation. It is important for me to point out that new regulation is not about making financial services the scapegoat for an economic crisis which we currently find ourselves in. In fact, this is not necessary about the extent of regulation. It is certainly about the quality of regulation. I'm sure you all know the saying of Andretti, the Formula One driver, who once said, if you have full control, you're not going fast enough. But let's face it, we have been going too fast and we had too little control. My argument today is, Regulation, per se, is not an impediment to the economy. Rather, regulation is the key to effective markets and competition. Regulation can act as much as an enabler, enabler as a curb to the economy. I think Denmark is an excellent example of how, just how important regulation is to maintain well-functioning financial service sector. There's no doubt that also in Denmark, banks were, at a certain point in time, too eager to lend money to non-viable businesses or private clients, just as the trend was across many countries in the world. Also in Denmark, banks have failed as a consequence of this. In the summer of 2008, Roskilde Bank was the first Danish bank to collapse, marking the arrival of the financial crisis in Denmark. Winding down the bank incurred costs on the taxpayer. And as a result of this first bank failure, the Danish government started negotiations with the industry. This dialogue led to an agreement which was sub subsequently reflected in a series of legislative acts. I'm sure you all know the saying of Mark Twain, a banker is a fellow who lends you his umbrella when the sun is shining, but wants it back the minute it begins to rain. Well, in Denmark, the banker must face the risk of becoming soaked by rain. The agreement between the industry and the Danish government affirmed the principle of the financial services sector absorbing its losses in solidarity. As a consequence, the Danish tax taxpayer has not faced further losses from subsequent bank failures. In fact, the Danish government is estimated to make a decent profit from the support it has extended to the financial service sector during the crisis. The dialogue between the financial services and the government has undoubtedly contributed to the maintenance, maintenance of trust in financial institutions. I have to say, unlike the UK, Denmark has seen very little banker bashing. Despite the losses, Danish financial services are still among the strongest in Europe. This summer, all Danish banks assessed in the European Banking Authority stress test 
came out among the top 25%. There are other sectors which demonstrate the notion that regulation per se is not a hindrance to efficient markets. Take, for instance, the Danish housing market, where duty of residence is the general rule accompanying home ownership. This means that the practice whereby real estate owners of all kinds sublet a handful or more flats, and which drives up prices in London housing market, as you all know, that is unfeasible under Danish law. The duty of residence allows the housing market to function efficiently, balancing costs with demand and supply. Furthermore, the Danish housing market is underpinned by a highly regulated but strongly stable part of our financial services, namely the mortgage credit market. Denmark has a unique mortgage system in which specialist institutions lend money to house buyers by issuing corporate bonds with preferential security in the property. In the 200 odd years this system has operated, investors have never experienced credit loss. The stability of the mortgage system is derived from a tight link between the loans and corporate bonds as credit institutes can only issue mortgage credits. Other elements to the system include tight regulations on the valuing of property and on the possible ratio of theft to value. As a consequence, the mortgage credit market was remarkably stable during the financial crisis. As I have sought to demonstrate, the Danish way of rating at times Differ, differs from that of our partners. This sometimes puts Danish businesses at an advantage. And when it comes to mm. the financial crisis, you could say, using a, a phrase from Oscar Wilde, we are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. This brings me to the need for close cooperation, cooperation on regulation within the EU as well as globally. globally. By January, Denmark takes up the presidency of the European Union. It will be the seventh time Denmark presides. We have therefore some experience in ensuring how to get about being the honest broker that is the very essence of the EU presidency. As you may be aware, the presidency falls upon a new Danish government that, came in, that, that only came into power recently. The new center-left Danish government has not yet adapted its priorities for the EU presidency. However, I can give you a brief overview of what our main priorities are likely to be, including on the regulation of financial services. Modernization of the single market will undoubtedly be one of our key objectives aimed at creating a better business environment in Europe. The Commission has proposed a package of 12 initiatives that will promote innovation and reduce red tape. We need to bring the single market firmly into the digital age, and to this end, we hope to get agreement on an efficient and user-friendly EU patent system, as well as a legally binding directive on consumer rights. A well-functioning internal market is a precondition for a stable Eurozone and economic growth across Europe. Another important objective is likely to be a strengthening of Europe's leadership in shaping a green agenda at the government level. Sorry, at the global level, of course. The Danish government wants the EU to do more to help European companies to remain at the cutting edge when it comes to developing green technologies and promoting energy efficiency. Therefore, funding for research and development in the energy sector must be increased. As a third objective, we are likely to seek tangible progress towards a deal on the future budget of the EU. With European economies struggling to get back on track, we should achieve meaningful reform in key areas such as the common, agri common agricultural policy and cohesion policy. A budget for the future means that we channel more money to areas that can help drive economic growth and create new jobs in Europe, including research, green technologies, energy efficiency and education. Growth and jobs are matters of urgency for Europe right now, and the Danish presidency will treat them accordingly. An EU budget for the future and modernization of the single market are objectives aimed at reinvigorating economic growth in Europe. This is essential for Europe's future, even more so because the competition we face globally 
from countries like China, India, and Brazil is intensifying, intensifying just as some of the former speakers have pointed out. Naturally, it will be about, it will, it will also be a high priority to the Danish presidency to ensure that implementation of the Reform Stability Pact, sound financial management of public resources, is not only a matter at the EU level, but also for the individual EU member states. <laughs> Consequently, Denmark welcomes the recent agreements within the Eurozone, which hopefully represents an important step towards resolving the zone's issues. Only by firm resolution can the EU move forward and focus on creating growth. As an old Viking wisdom goes, no harvest is had without the seed first being sown. At the global level, the EU must use the political and economic weight to lead and to insist on global reform. This, of course, means that the EU must voice strong common positions in international negotiations, including in the G20. Denmark welcomes the Commission's proposal on a financial transaction tax. However, the Danish government finds, just as was set out by Mr. Fallon, that a transaction tax must necessarily be implemented at the global level in order to safeguard the competitiveness of European financial services. Therefore, Denmark will advocate for the EU to promote a global tax on financial services. <coughs> on financial regulation, the Danish presidency is likely to focus on reaching an agreement on the Capital Requirement Directive, CRD4, which translates the Basel, Basel III standards to Euro European legislation. Furthermore, we will seek agreement on a common European framework for crisis management for the financial service sector. This could be in the form of procedures for early intervention and prevention when it comes to fragile banks, as well as improved coordination between national supervision authorities. The Danish presidency will prioritize negotiations with the European Parliament on the regulation of derivatives trading, the so-called European Market Infrastructure Regulation, the EMEA. Lastly, in this non-comprehensive listing of initiatives, I should like to point out that Denmark will also pay special attention to improving the protection of European consumers of financial services. <laughs> Danish financial service sector may not be as dominant as the city of London. It does, however, include serious players with international ambitions. With London being the nearest of the three global financial centers, many Danish financial institutions are represented in the square mile. The City of London acts as a platform for their international engagement, but for some financial institutions and suppliers, the UK is also seen as a market in its own right. In fact, a growing number of Danish finance IT companies are looking to establish themselves in London. The success of established players such as Saxo Bank and Simcorp have in this regard led the way for future Danish inroads to this market. Furthermore, CFH Markets, a London-based progress firm operating under the Danish CFH Group, is striving to the UK market, while the Danish pension fund, ATP, is just entering the British pension market as it expands with the introduction of automatic pension enrollment mm -hmm. under the name of now pension. As the Danish example demonstrates, it is not regulation per se, nor the quantity of that regulation which determines how efficiently a market operates. Rather, it is the quality of that regulation. For the sake of our future economic prosperity, we must strike the right tone in regulating the financial services on the European level as well as globally. And we have to keep our optimism and believe in a strong financial sector. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.